All right, so uh, digging deeper, I don't know, what is this, episode number 120-something? If you say it, I believe it. Yeah, I, I can't remember. I want to say like 127 or something. Anyway, so yesterday was our group's fair, and uh, we were um, telling people about getting in small groups, and you opened again with the second chapter of Acts, talking about how the people got together on a daily basis and prayed together and had fellowship and uh, shared a meal and and uh, just the fact that this whole idea of getting together in community wasn't something new that we've created in the 20th century but or the 21st century. You just dated yourself there, John. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's fact. By the way, by the way, if you're new to digging deeper, uh, my name's Bobby, lead pastor at <laughs> yes. Rye City. This is uh, John Cumby, uh, our, the most faithful listener to digging deeper. That's what I've been told. Yeah, I think I've I think I've watched and listened to every every one of them. I love it. You know, love we, we kind of you know, and that was a kind of an interesting pivot because during COVID, when we were all told, "Oh no, you can't get together with people," etc., you know, we found ways to get together in community online. Whether it was, uh, you know, we were doing a Zoom group. Group. I mean, our our life group met on Zoom. Mm, those are the de- Zoom groups, man. I know people who still do Zoom groups, yeah. and uh, after like my third Zoom meeting, I decided that I thought Zoom was of the devil, and I never wanted to experience it again. <laughs> I'm just playing. It was it it served its purpose during a difficult time. It, it did, and and I think that speaks to the fact that we have a need for community. Yes, and even when uh, we're being told we we can't have community or we can't gather physically together. We have that need for interaction with other people. I'm, uh, I'm a huge advocate of community. Yeah, I think God designed us that way. Absolutely. You know, and I know that's what we talked about yesterday, community. But God designed us for relationship and closeness. And um, you know, I, I remember like growing up, you'd you'd hear they did like like studies and experiments, and like children that are left with no touch. And mm. no conversation, the detrimental effects that can have on them. And, oh, yeah. And, you know, as adults, it's the same. We, they're internally, whether we think we need it or not, we actually need healthy relationships in our life. I, I'm, I'm such an advocate of that. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I find personally, I draw strength from community. Um, if I'm alone, I can, I can go down my own little, uh, sorrel pool. But when I get around other people, you know, I'm, I'm encouraged by them. I'm uplifted by them. And, uh, I think that's such a huge part of what the church is, is community. Yeah. Um, you know, I, interestingly on my walk this morning, I bumped into a friend and, and admittedly he's been caring for his wife who's got cancer. Mm. So he said he hasn't been to church in a year and a half and, you know, he gets his input online, but just the evidence of the fact that he was out taking a walk, I was out taking a walk, we encountered one another, and he wanted to talk mm-hmm. yeah. because he needs community. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think that's, you know, just a, a sight into our souls is the fact that we really need one another. You know, I have a, a friend who uh, pastors a church um, on the other side of the U.S., and um, they ha- asked this question on their church's social media, like, why, why do you not? go to church. If you don't go to church, mm. why do you not? Like, what's the reason why? And, you know, some of the comments I saw in there was regarding, well, I watch online. Yeah. And watching online is great. I mean, we have, we're in a content-driven generation now. So we have yeah. all the content in the world, all the preaching in the world, all the great worship in the world. And, and that's great. It's, it's awesome to be able to have that at our fingertips. But the church is a lot more than just a pastor preaching mm. or... Uh, or just a worship leader singing some songs. It's a lot more than that. Um, the church isn't just what happens on Sunday morning. What happens on Sunday morning is a part of the church. It's yep. a part of our function, our form, the design God gave us. But it is, if we boil down our church experience to just an hour on Sunday morning, we're missing out on so much that God has for us. Big time. Yeah. Big time. You know, you. Uh, you made the comment about you know going to the gym, getting healthy, etc. And uh, you know initially you used the word being committed, but then you transitioned 
to using the word devoted, which to me is a deeper level mm-hmm. of commitment. And, and I think we need to be devoted to that community, to interacting with one another, not just on Sunday morning, but throughout the week. I mean, uh, I think back to when Penny and I were um, fairly new Christians and young marrieds and so forth, and we'd uh, meet with this group of people out in a park, but then there were certain other couples We'd go and we'd get in and out and we'd go to somebody's house and we'd spend the rest of Sunday afternoon together, you know, interacting, uh, building relationship and encouraging one another. Yeah. And I think we need that throughout the week. Um, You know, on the one hand, we don't want to uh, shut out the world around us because they need us. Yep. But on the other hand, we do want to surround ourselves with other Christ followers because they help feed us spiritually. Yeah, that was in the the middle of a message. And uh, actually, because I talked about some of the fruit that we experience, you know, you mm-hmm. don't go through hardships alone and, yes. and things like that. One of the ones I had on there, and I actually removed it because um, because it's true and it's important, but it was one where I was like, I want to give extra context to this, uh, talking about how we function in the world we're in. And so this upcoming Sunday, um, I'm actually... I'm doing the last part of the, our series, and I'm going to pivot over to what our how we walk in the world. It, so it's been the table, the pulpit, mm. the table, and the square, the public square. And so how does the Christian function in our world? And so if our core, if those that we are close to, our friends, those who encourage us in the faith, if we have those relationships in our life, then we can be more effective in the public square in the world that Absolutely. God's called us to reach and to live in. And so you can't separate the two. I think the mm-hmm. danger of the Christian is to only want to sit in the in in the in that pocket of like yeah. I'm only going to be with my Christian friends only and always and forget the the purpose of why we're still on the earth. Yeah. And then the other side of it is the people go, well, I don't need the Christian friends. I'm just going to go try to reach people. And then the next thing you know, you're struggling because your that true sense of community is off. So they definitely go hand in hand. But I don't want to jump into those ideas on my end yet because I'm going to preach about That's it. That's going to be next weekend. Sunday. That's yes. going to be good. You know, um, <clears throat> so, you know, you talked about um, attitude. And, and, you know, we talk about an attitude of gratitude and an attitude of being in fellowship and so forth, and that some people don't want to be in groups because of an attitude. Uh, yeah, I think the word I used is um, they just don't like it. Um, yeah. You know, and that is, that is. whenever I preach, one of the things I try to do is I, I try to talk about or bring up the thing that maybe maybe the average person would try to avoid. And so, like, we don't want to say, oh, I don't like it, but hey, let's just be honest about it. Some people, I think I, I, I use the analogy that my uh, 10-year-old Ezra doesn't like broccoli, broccoli yeah. <laughs> but he has to eat it anyway. Yep. And and I, I think I told the church, I think it was that, uh, what I say, I said that for some people, groups, like it sounds like for you and Penny, groups are like, it's the dessert, it's the steak. Uh, I said it was the carne asada fries with right. extra guacamole, you know? Boy, everybody responded uh, to that. They liked that one. <laughs> but then for other people, groups are like broccoli. They don't... Yeah. It's it's not their go to meal. It's not the thing that they instinctively want the most. But that having that as a part of your diet is still important as as a Christian believer. And so, if you're in a position where you're like, I don't really like groups, um, I think we have the ability as human beings to find the joy, to have the right attitude about it, and to find the goodness in it. Well, you know, and I thought about the excuses. Um, you know, at my core, I'm an introvert okay. and I've, I've learned to work beyond that. And, but, you know, I can think about, you know, I, I don't really want to go sit with a bunch of people I don't know. Um, you know, Rooted was a great example of that where you get in a group with a bunch of people you actually don't know, but as you spend time with them over the weeks and you, you do life with them and you talk about their lives, you start to develop relationships, mm-hmm. and, and therefore they're not strangers anymore. Yeah. Or the people who say, well, I don't have time for it. I'm too busy. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was thinking about that last night, and I thought, well, I don't want to be too blunt, but do you want to grow your relationship with Christ? You know, <laughs> so 
I got I got thoughts on both of those, John. Let me let's go to your first the the first one where um, the introverted. I don't know anyone. Well, um, my first initial thoughts. It's sort of exactly what you said is um, you don't know anyone until you know them. Mm-hmm. Like that is the nature of life. If you don't know someone, you don't know them. But once you know them, you know them. And uh, I think I talked about it yesterday. It talks about it's just that degree of intentionality right. that live life on purpose live life for a reason and then when it comes down to the uh, i don't have time now we know life is busy i mean it's the nature of life we people have hobbies they have they have friends kids are busy you know we have three kids Megan and i yeah. and so um it hasn't picked up for us quite yet um because we've been here for only a month now but even tonight um, both my boys have a guest soccer practice. They're going to go practice with a team cool. to try it out. And once that gets rolling, I know that's a couple nights out of the week that um, they're going to be practicing. Simon has youth on Wednesday night. Um, and then school and homework and, and yeah. all the other things. So there are a lot on our plate. And I think the danger is um, if you look at your time of the day, like how much, like a budget of your finances, you, we only have the amount of hours that we have. And if we don't have time, I think we have to start looking, going, what are the priorities? Yeah. And so like for us, our kids being in soccer because the boys love it, that is a priority mm-hmm. for hours. So, um, so I don't lose that time, but then I got to, if I'm, you know, groups or whatever it may be, church on Sunday morning, I, there's things that we do not fold on. So Wednesday night youth, Simon's at youth. So he doesn't have practice on Wednesday nights. That's just the way awesome. we roll. Yeah. But um, he may have practice Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and that's just the nature of the way it's going to go. So we make sure we fit in the things that are important um, and we prioritize those lists. So I think the, the church for a long time basically... Um, would try to teach people just don't do anything but the church things. And yeah. I, I don't think that's going to work. You know what no. I mean? It's, it's not a recipe that's going to work. Um, but if we prioritize them, make the appropriate decisions in the way we parent, the way we are, you know, me and Megan, we do dates every week. So, that's like, awesome. you know, we do Friday day dates. Kids are in school, we do day dates. It's a priority for us. So if someone calls me on a Friday, if it's not an emergency, um, or if it's not something that that warrants taking away that that's the time me and Megan spend every week, then we wait and we do that thing some other time. But we keep our that date as sort of a sacred moment for us. And um, there's got to be things in our life that we go. Yes, groups might require more time because it's an extra night or it's Sunday afternoon, but maybe a group on a Sunday afternoon is more important than the nap or the football game. Yeah, yeah, you know. Or maybe find a group that watches the football game and then talks about Jesus at halftime. I don't know. <laughs> and if there's not one of those groups, maybe someone should start, start one. one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lots of options. You know, um, that kind of goes to, well, a couple of thoughts. One was the person who says, well, I watch online or I don't need groups or whatever. And the thought that first came to my mind was that poem by John Donne, No Man is an Island. Mm. And you know that we are part of an entirety, and then that kind of led me into First uh, Corinthians twelve. You know, one body, many parts. Yeah. And you touched on that a couple of weeks ago when you talked about cutting off the hand and it can't survive. Yeah. Um, you know, we are part of a, a bigger thing, and we do need one another. Um, you know, we need other people to feed into us, and we have things that probably we need to feed into other people. A hundred percent we do. Um, I think the enemy would want to convince anybody, uh, the enemy, for those of you listening who maybe don't have a big church ex- background, the enemy is the evil one, Satan, the yeah. devil. Jesus talks about uh, him. But he would love to convince every believer they have nothing to offer. Right. And there's a multitude of reasons why people go down that route. Sometimes it's their past and their history. Sometimes they feel like they're just not good enough yet Mm -hmm. (laughs) as if they can work themselves together. You know what I mean? There's all the things we believe, but if you've given your life to Christ and you're on a journey with Jesus, that means you're redeemed, you're restored, uh, you've been made brand new, Mm -hmm. and you're still working out your salvation and what that looks like. But if you've done that, then God has something in your life that is going to be a blessing to someone in your world. And um, I talked about it as a sense of like... uh, 
as a church, we say we're generous. That's a, that's a marker. That's an identity marker of our church. We're generous. And the first thing everyone thinks of when I say, when we say generous is money. Yeah. Um, money is probably the easiest. Like if you're wealthy, money's the easiest thing to be generous with because you know how to get more of it. No big deal. Um, and we should be generous with our money, you know? And if you're not wealthy, you might be like, no, that's harder to be generous with, but still we do know how to get more money. But with time, you have the same amount of time it's always. Finite. It's finite. You don't get more. No one has more. No one has less. Maybe more time on earth, but when it comes to today, everyone has the same 24 hours. Yeah. And so uh, when we're generous with our time, uh, when we're generous with our life, when we open up ourselves to others, I think that's just a marker that we have to know that when we say we're generous, it's not just about one facet of humanity, but it's actually the the totality of who we are, our time, our encouragement, mm. our finances, our talents, um, anything that we may have, if God's blessed us with it, if all good things come from God, then to be the type of person who goes, okay, if all good things come from God, then I'll be generous with all good things that God has given to me. Well, and you said near the end of your message, you said the groups need you as much as you need the groups. And, yeah. and that was speaking to the generosity. And then <clears throat> I was thinking about you know time, talent, experience, um, coming alongside, um, you know, and, and I don't know, you made a comment, let's see, what was it? It was something uh, about that you, someone else's story, their breakthrough may need what you can, what you can give them input. Yes, yes. And, you know, I was thinking about the fact that sometimes there's somebody who's struggling with something and either you're just there or you have had an experience, or you have some wisdom that you can speak into them that may help them make a breakthrough, and that's huge. It's it's huge. I mean, we, if we all have something to bring to the table, we all have something to offer. Um, you know, if if someone's breakthrough comes on the other side of my obedience to be generous with my life, if that happens, then um, it, there are people who. There are people who are convinced themselves they don't have anything to bring. Well, yeah. that's a lie. Don't believe that lie. And there are, there are other people who are like, well, maybe I do have something to bring. And the truth is, you do. And you might you might have wisdom when it comes to business. You might have wisdom when it comes to finance. You might have wisdom when it comes to how to raise your kids, how to how to live a healthy marriage. And if you have that and you're in a setting with people, then you have the opportunity to help sharpen and help bring help to someone else in the room. And I think there's a beauty of that. That's, um, you know, I know guys, this is a little different, but similar. I know guys who work like in the media industry. Um, I was a part of a church in Florida for a number of years, and they work like in the media. Like they do, like they've done videos and recordings and edits and shoots and all kinds of stuff like that. And they learned their entire skill trade in the church. Mm. And, um, and I know guys who run businesses that they've helped other guys in the business world become sharper and know how to do it well. And they learned this in the church and they've helped people through the church. And so I think there has to be sort of this idea that if, again, if I have something good, God has given me. Yeah. then I can share that wisdom, I can share that knowledge with those around me and be intentional about it. Well, and there's there's reciprocal. I was thinking about, there's this old song by a guy named Bill Withers, and the, it starts out, it says, Lean on me when you're not strong. I'll be your strength. I'll help you carry on. It won't be too long till I need somebody to lean on. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Let's let's um, let's rewind that real quick and sing it for us. Don't just <laughs> <No>. <laughs> not gonna sing it lean today. On me <laughs> when you're not strong. Love it, love it. <laughs> but you know, I mean, that's the thing. There's there's reciprocity there. You know, lean on me when you're not strong, but it won't be too long when I'll need somebody to lean on. Yep. And and you know, that's that's the way life is. Um, we go through ups and downs and, and we've had experiences and, you know, I've had the, okay, I'm one of those people who thought, yeah, I have nothing to bring. I'm, I'm, I am not an academic. I am not somebody who can memorize scripture and so forth. That's just not my, uh, my gifting, but I have learned over time. I do have some things that I can share with others that are helpful to them. Some of it is coming alongside. I mean, mm -hmm. I've had a, a couple of guys, even here at Rise, where, I've tried to stay alongside of them actually for two, three years now, 
as mm. they've gone through some challenging times and just stay in touch and, and let them know, hey, I'm here, I'm praying for you, and uh, let's get together. And I know over time it has made a difference in their lives. Definitely. And I like what you said about, you know, things are reciprocal and they come back. When I've done m- missions trips in Guatemala probably a, eight to ten times, and I know as a church here at Rise, we build, we help build homes in Mexico, and this year we, we're doing five. I think we've done three yeah. or four of them so far. Um, and I was actually talking to someone about the homes and and the experience of being somewhere else in another world, and with you know, and they have different experiences there. And one of the things that we talked about, and and this is true for anyone I know who's ever been on this kind of mission trip, um, where you go to the place with the intention of I'm I'm going to help. We're going to you know, do VBSs or we're going to help yeah. build something or we're going to take part of what this community is doing. And after a few days being in that environment, it's, you know, in Guatemala, I remember we'd be in the community and it's a small community. It's a two hour drive up the mountain. Uh, maybe 900 people live in the community hmm. and there would be kids um, who had fun every day. They had very little in the terms of uh, possessions. They had very, very little in terms of money. They had very little... Houses had dirt floors for the most part. Mm. And, you know, this was the nature of life they were in. But they still had this sense of joy and excitement, and they had fun still. And I, any trip I've ever been on like that, there would be people go, going, going, I'm going to go help. And by the end of it, they were going, I think I was helped more by being here mm. than, than the help I even brought. And so it's the same thing. Sometimes you go into a group and you're like, I do have something to bring, and you do. And you might find yourself in that environment and realize, you know what, this has actually been better for me than I have been for it because it's helped me grow and learn and see God in a new way. And um, yeah, that's beautiful. You know, I I think about that in the context of, of the small groups, the life groups here. Um, so for a while, I was um, facilitating the Tuesday morning men's group. And, you know, so I, I felt a responsibility to prepare and, you know, to have some things ready, if you will, an agenda of sorts. Um, and of course, I always got blessed out of it as much or more than the guys who were also being there. Yeah. Um, and then on the other side, you know, being an attender as opposed to being a facilitator, um, you know, in the Wednesday morning group that I've been going to for the last year and a half or so, um, not only do we learn about the word, but we're learning about other people, their lives. Uh, we've developed relationships among the guys that are there and, you know, it's just rich. I mean, you're enriched by the the community. You know, um, you you just you said something that made me think about. Um, okay, so what we do at times is we we you know we look at other people. We don't know their story. Maybe we're far from them, and we can make quick snap judgments on oh, other yeah. people. Um, you know, and it just it's the nature of humanity. We do that, but once you get to know someone, and once you get to know their story a little bit more you view what once was a snap judgment, you view it differently. And um, I think sometimes the danger of us as Christ followers is we make too quick a judgment. And I know we're not supposed to judge, but let's just shoot straight, <laughs> Honest, you know, real yeah, quick. Let's human. be honest for we're a moment human. here. We make too quick a judgments about people and their story and their life and the decisions they've made. Um, uh, but if we were to take time and get to know people's story, um, I believe that oftentimes we would see a completely different perspective of their life and what's going on, and we would find not only ways that we would be encouraged from their story, but also ways that we could help them along the way. And so I think there's this thing where, um, let's use a different analogy here, social media. Have you ever seen someone mm. post something on social media, and then someone jumps up on their keyboard, oh, and they, yeah. like, they snap back real hard, like real strong, like, yeah. like they're threatening, you know, it... it it's like Mike Tyson made the 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 post thread and you responded like you were going to beat up Mike Tyson. That <laughs> you know, but if you were to encounter someone in like face to face, usually the guys who are the most aggressive on social media are are much more timid yep. face to face. Um and when we 
sort of like disconnect ourselves from people, it it causes us sometimes as human beings to be more callous, to be more yes. uh, brash, more uh, judgmental of people. But when you connect yourself, when you remove that disconnection, you connect yourself, you can see people, you know, I even say maybe in the ways that Christ sees us. Hopefully. And um, you could see through a, a new lens and a new light. I was thinking about the video that the Amaral's did at church oh, yesterday. That was... And um, I can't remember who it was, but on social media, someone just commented uh, to them how much they loved them and how much they... Uh, it might be Whitney who did Whitney, it, but... yeah. Was it... So yeah. how much loved them, loved their story, and that connect... You know, like that sisterhood. They, they called it something yep. else. Uh, but uh, sisterhood. And, you know, it's that. That's the design is to have friendships and connections, people to encourage one another, people to build up each other's faith, to equip us. And um, yeah, that's why community is so important, because if you don't find yourself in community, you're going to miss out. You're going to miss out on the richness of true relationship and community. Well, you know, and I think part of our human nature is um, we like people who are of like mind with us, and we judge people who are maybe not or who um, appear to be different than us. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I go back to um, there was a, a time when Brandon interviewed a guy who is one of his very close friends who's an African-American guy. And there were some people here who were, no, they 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 had a problem with it. Maybe because he was African American, maybe because he uh, made some comments that rubbed them the wrong way or something. And yet, you know, here's this guy who Brandon was very close to and has gotten to know and is one of his dearest friends. And I think, you know, even around here, I love the fact I get to interact with people that are not like me. Mm -hmm. I get to hug them. I get to get to know them, their names. Even sometimes I can remember their kids' names. That's impressive. That's <laughs> and, imp and, and, you know, so these people who, if I just saw them on the street, I would not be inclined to even give them a second look, perhaps. But once you get to know them, they're humans. They're lovely people. Yeah. They and that, I mean, images of Christ. To clarify what John's even talking about here, it's like, when we when we when I think of diversity, I don't just think of race. I think of age. I think of socioeconomic oh, yeah. class. I think of the way the way you were brought up. Um, you know, diversity is is a is a large spectrum of things. Um, so in a church, in our church, we may have people who've been who cut their teeth on the pew, so to speak, yeah. raised in church their whole life, and we may have other people, which we did this past weekend. We had, uh, I think it was 11 people who committed their life to Praise Christ this Lord. past weekend, and I think many of them, according to the cards that I saw just a few minutes before we started recording this, were first-time decisions. So in the awesome. same room, we have people who have lived their whole life in church and some experience of faith, and people who are brand new decisions to follow Christ. There, there's, a, there's a massive amount of diversity mm -hmm. in that. Um, and like I said, race is part of it, but age is part of it. You know, there's older people in the room, there's younger people. You're one of the older ones? <laughs> I would like to believe I'm one of the younger ones, but my 14, <laughs> almost 15-year-old tells me I'm one of the older ones. No, uh, no, no, you're, you're right, right in the middle. Right in the middle. Right in the middle. <laughs> so what you're saying is I'm middle-aged. <laughs> yeah. so that's what I just heard. That's what they're saying. Um, that's what they're saying. <laughs> uh, but, you know, like that, and, you know, sometimes that gap, the old and the young, become the most volatile in church because the younger want to press into maybe more creativity, louder, yeah. more expression, and the older maybe want the more traditional and the, you know, all the things. But when we know each other, when when we connect and we find the humanity in one another, then the next thing you know, it's like, oh, well, that's good. Let maybe, maybe I shouldn't be so quick to judge, or maybe I should be more relaxed myself. It usually calms me down. Yeah, you know, and, and it, that's an interesting thing, as you say, the um, age, not maybe maybe not ethnicity so much, but age. I mean, I remember um, being in church, you know, when we were much younger, and really had no desire to interact with older people, people who are the age I am now. <laughs> and, you know, but then at some point, realizing that some of these people had some wisdom, some experience, yeah. and... Uh, in some ways, you know, I can think of a couple of situations where somebody spoke into my life 
with calming words. Um, you know, there was a song I heard a, a couple of weeks ago on a Sunday morning, and the uh, the chorus was, I'm fighting a battle, but you've already won. Mm. I don't know what you're doing, but I know what you've done. That's good. Yeah. And so I'm thinking about, you know, we go through these times in our life where we don't know what God's doing. We don't understand. We're kind of trying to figure it out. But if we stop and think, we know what he's already done, and we know he's faithful. And sometimes people can speak that kind of wisdom into our life when we're going through something. And um, that's from community. Yep. And that's where it happens, yeah. you know? Um, and it's good to have people in your community who think differently than you. It is. It's healthy. Um so uh, it's kind of like the cross pollination of the fruit yeah. trees, etc. Yeah, and you know, um, I don't. Uh, this is a weird analogy here, but there's stories of like ancient royals, like in Europe, because the 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 pool of people they could choose from to marry off to had to be also royals. Mm. Over time, it caused birth defects and other deformities yeah. because... Um, the inbreeding. Beca- yeah, because of the inbreeding. And so you look at what we... Like, if the only people we have in our life are the people who are just like us, you're missing out on a lot of things. Um, so I like to have younger people in my life because, like Dawson, who's behind the camera, yeah. because they're creative, they're edgy, they push the status quo, they ask the hard questions. Um, but I also like to have the older people in my life because they've experienced life. They have wisdom of their experience and knowledge where a young person doesn't typically even think about the risk. Uh, so I want them, yeah. I want their kind of tenacity and boldness. And maybe sometimes the older person, all they think about is the risk. So I need this to balance that out. Yeah. But the older person <laughs> thinks about the wisdom and the younger person maybe thinks about well, the experience, and it's not about the wisdom. So I need the wisdom to balance out just the try it out anyway kind of thing. So you need a broad spectrum of people in your life if you're going to live it to the fullest. You know, that makes me think about my fellow elders. And uh, we are five people with very different personalities. And, uh, you know, as we were getting to know one another, because four of the five of us all came onto the elder board at the same time. And um, there are some divergent personalities there. But in that difference, there's a richness. And so as we embarked on this process of asking God to bring us a new lead pastor, it was like, five of us are going to agree unanimously on something without arm twisting, without (laughs) politicking and cajoling. And by gosh, the Holy Spirit did it. (laughs) I mean, in just the most amazing way. And we kind of looked at each other and went, praise the Lord. Wow. Because of the diversity, we had different paradigms on how we came at it. But God worked, again, in community. And, uh, you know, again, I'm, I'm the elderly elder. The the other guys are all young. They're all young, <laughs> <laughs> but but there was richness in that diversity. Yeah, and I think that's the thing about community, about groups, and you know. So uh, so I I wore my group's T shirt. I saw that just you know because I felt I'd it would be an homage to the uh, topic. But uh, I can't encourage people enough. I think we talked yesterday morning briefly, and you said roughly thirty percent of rise is involved in groups. Yeah. We really need 60, 70, 75, 80%, because that's where community takes place. And, uh, you know, I I just can't encourage people enough to get into a group, to find a group. Yeah. And and there are so many different groups. And and by the same token, so, (laughs) you know, people may be led to lead a new group. Uh, I am so, so uh, encouraged that... uh, Robert and Valerie Peterson are doing a, a new group on blended families. Love it. Yeah. There are, I'm sure, a lot of blended families in Rise City and in the community at large. And they've, you know, they've worked their way through various challenges and so forth and bless them for stepping out and saying, hey, we're going to see who else is out there that's in this same uh, bucket and maybe what we can learn from one another, how we can support yeah. one another. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. And then, you know, We've got 
you know, the, the early morning groups, you know, I know that uh, there are two men's groups that meet early. So the guys that have to go to work, they can go to a group and then they can go to work yeah. on time. And then they're, you know, like Mike and Colleen do a, a group that's later in the day for seniors and people who don't have work schedules. Yeah. But um, there's so many options. If you have yet to sign up for a group, you can actually jump on uh, Rice City's website at any point in time. Uh, if you're here local in San Diego, maybe you're here local in San Diego and you um, you don't come to the church yet, uh, but you've just been sort of checking us out online. You can sign up for a group as well. Uh, but uh, you can do that on our website and um, follow the links and the promptings. I don't know exactly how to get there, so. <laughs> Uh, if you need help with that, you can just email us. But uh, you should be able to find all the details on the website. Get signed up because they start, they kick off, um, they're kicking think, off, yeah, yeah the, in like a week's next, time, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know, um, you know, it says in Genesis, God didn't make man to be alone. We yep. need to be in community. We need to, we need people to lean on. We need people to lean on us. And uh, so I don't know. I think we're about to wrap, but love it. Just want people to get into groups. Yeah, yeah, definitely. John, thank you for uh, coming out and doing the uh, the interview part. Uh, it was a privilege, and you know, morning. the crazy thing was, like I say, so uh, normally I'd be on the golf course on a Monday morning, but one of my guys is up in Montana fly fishing. One of them, who's a member here at the church, had a surgical procedure on his back and can't swing a golf club for a few weeks. Mm. Another guy has a problem with a frozen shoulder. So, hey, I'm available. Here you are. Praise the Lord. Filling in on the spot. Well, I love it, man. I, it's been a fun, really, it's been a fun conversation today. And I love it because your heart is already so connected into groups. And, yeah. um, and you know... You know, you've seen the fruit in it on your own life. Absolutely. And so we appreciate you guys uh, listening today, watching from wherever you're at, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you back on the podcast next go round and next Sunday. Love it. All right.